Hey guys, I'm back, and this is the campaign mode. Now, I've, I'm playing as the English, and I've gotten quite far. And you can zoom in on each town, see all these little ships riding around. And there's nothing, and I mean nothing more, well, nothing better of a good feeling than going from Gibraltar and looking, sorry for that, but uh, anyways, going for, to see your empire, searching out from Gibraltar through France, all the way to Switzerland, Innsbruck, Bavaria, and all the way north to Edinburgh, Dublin. And unfortunately, in this game, it's centered around Europe, so you cannot go to places like America. But here, we can see all of our provinces and here you could see this army I'm recruiting here. And once this garrison is recruited, this whole army will travel and attack Prague. But anyways, it's very intriguing, this campaign, because unlike, uh, for example, Medieval 2 and... Well, yeah, Medieval 2 and Rome Total War... In all of those games, for example, in those games, you had to meddle with diplomats. And, well, those were the most annoying because you had to travel halfway across the world, the known world at least, just to talk to another faction. But here, everything is displayed in one little screen here. The diplomacy. Now, in the beginning of the game... Uh, you're actually friends with Portugal, but now they're hostile because, well, you'd probably also be pissed if you were stranded here and you have to march halfway across Europe to just to be part of the war effort. Now, in this game, there are four, four religions. There is... Orthodoxy, Protestantism, Catholicism, and Islam. Now, uh, France is apparently friends with Portugal. Now, the AI in this game is a bit smarter than they were in Medieval 2, meaning they didn't attack you by random... And in this game, not all your generals are your, you know, family members. They're actually, you can actually enlist them. As you can see, I, have, I don't have that much of a problem with income because look how much money I make. But in the beginning, you don't make that much being England. I am... A constitutional monarchy, meaning our guys vote. And actually, in the beginning of the campaign, we only start out with these four and Gibraltar over here. There are also many stations like this, from which you can trade with other for example, North Africa here, and, yeah, trade with lots of places. And unlike in Medieval 2 where you had to wait for technologies to be unlocked, for example, oh my god, gunpowder was invented, you actually research things, and you need certain buildings to research certain things. This is what I don't really like, because I have five places where I can study things and I have nothing to study right now. So 
that's a little minus of this game. So, but that make everything else makes up for this. And during and now I all I have to do is end the turn and see what happens. What I like about this game is while the turn is ending, you could actually see. Well, you could see, but you only see the necessary things. You don't just hover over a place. And the French are going into my territories. That is not a good thing. So, um, this is actually a very good game. And if you're, and if you like Napoleonic era or any of those, era, or just like this time, you know, the beginning of the of the 19th century, oh, oh, you should get this game. It's worth it. It's, I believe, $20 or 15 even on Steam. And it's just amazing. I don't care. See, these pop up a lot. It shows you who have you who you have just recruited. And now, his ar and now this army is ready to march on Prague with them staying as garrison. They will march on Prague. And now, for my final score of this game. In graphics, I give it a 9.5 out of 10. It's truly amazing. I Unfortunately, I did not have the time to go through all the features because that would take ages. And that's for graphics. For AI, I give it an 8 out of 10 or even a 7 out of 10 because the AI messes up occasionally. For example, they just don't use their artillery at all. But mostly, the AI actually does something useful for them. And, well, they, for example, flank you and they don't get distracted and they don't just run away if they see your cavalry. So, yeah, for present, for gameplay, I give it a nine I give it a nine out of ten because it's I really like this game. I love this game. And overall I give it an eight point five out of ten because it's an amazing game and I really recommend for you to try it. At least the demo. And that was the Etskov one. Thanks for watching this review on Napoleon on Napoleon Total War. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.